the time. So yeah, uh, yeah let's, let's crack on and then we'll I'll keep an eye on that and let people in as we go. So. Of course. So welcome everybody. There's a, a few faces here I recognise from uh, from previous events. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Ben McDonald and I am the events and training coordinator at Hampshire Chamber of Commerce. Um, just to keep you updated with a few events we have done recently, like you, we are facing many challenges as a business. Um, part of the, our business is hosting online, or, well, it was hosting events. Since the lockdown and the government regulations, we have moved into an online virtual event world, one of which is what you are joining us on today. We've also hosted a, a virtual pure networking event with more of them to follow. And we've also hosted six Chamber of Solutions. Now, these are a way to speak to experts in the field around government legislation, regulations, furloughing, mental health and well-being, you name it, we're trying to cover it and preparing businesses for going back to work. These are a weekly event on a Tuesday morning, which I'll be happy to share the link with you after this. Uh, Kevin may go more into himself shortly, so I don't want to take too much thunder away from him. Kevin has been a member of Hampshire Chamber for 14 years, as I've just found out, and I, I knew he was used to be on our board of directors. So he is heavily involved the chamber and does his best when possible. Just a few housekeeping rules. Um, Kevin has already turned off everyone's microphones and muted you all. As the presentation goes, Kevin's shortly gonna share his screen. So as the presentation goes on, if you'd like to ask a question, just write it in the chat box, which I will keep, which I'll monitor throughout the presentation and I will ask your direct, uh, questions directly to Kevin. So thank you and over to you, Kevin. Excellent, good. Thanks, Ben, and uh, welcome everybody uh, on this uh, sort of en end of the week. And uh, great to have you all here. Um, just for those, I know there's a number of people that sort of know me. There's a few that probably haven't come across me. Um, so I've been uh, coaching businesses now for 14 years, literally. Uh, I think uh, next week will be my uh, the day I started 14 years ago. Um, I've been in businesses, well, working with businesses pretty much most of my life. My, my parents both had businesses when I was uh, an early teenager. So 81, I think my dad started a, a sign company. Mum had a printing business. So, so this is actually my fourth recession. So uh, the fourth one of these that I've been through. Uh, three have been externally generated. Uh, so everyone's gone through. One was sort of fairly industry specific. So, you know, going through the sessions, you, you tend to learn a lot. Uh, you tend to learn by mistakes, uh, which is, uh, you know, it's a painful, expensive way to learn. Um, and, you know, but then you learn through other people's mistakes, you know, their lessons, and you pick up what they've been through, which can, uh, can really help speed this forward. So what I wanted to cover today was you know, a few of the lessons that I've learned along the way around the importance of planning. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's one of those things that uh, people think about. You know, if, I, if I ask you, you'd know the importance of it, but actually do enough of us do it properly. And I wanted to come up to a little bit from a different angle, a little bit about the psychology of it and why people say, yes, you've got to plan, but deep down, do you know why you should plan? And when you do plan, how to do it effectively. So I'm going to find my presentation here. Um, sorry, let's push the wrong button. So it will share my screen, which is here. So hopefully you can see that all good now. Um, I think, Ben, if you're still there, if you can monitor the, uh, uh, the waiting room just to make sure people uh, do come in, because I seem to have lost that from my screen at the moment. Um, so... I'm going to use the context of, of bouncing back, you know, because your know, planning is, you know, what, what I'm going to talk about here is the same planning for any situation. Okay, whatever we're doing, we need to think about these things. So, but we're going to use it in a context so we can actually put it into place and see how it actually works in this context of we've, we've come from, you know, a nice calm waters from pre COVID into in the last year through the ramp up, through the fall off the cliff, you know, the scrambling around trying to sort, of sort ourselves out, through to a bit of a lull now, I'm certainly finding some of my clients are feeling a little bit uh, flat at the moment, the last couple of weeks, uh, but then we're coming back into ramping up and then hopefully 
really working hard to get back to the, whatever the new normal is. So if we, if we look at this and sort of say, you know, why, why do I need to bother with a plan? Okay, why do I really need to do this? And it, it's probably been something that's been on uh, academics' minds for a number of years. And this was a study uh, going back sort of quite a few years now. Uh, I think it was Harvard Business School this came out of, and they wanted to see out of you know, a selection of people, you know, how many people actually write plans. And this is not necessarily businesses, this is you know, people generally. And yeah, their little study showed that only 3% of people actually took the effort of actually setting their goals and writing plans. But when they looked at the study of that to see where the wealth was, they found that of those three people, 98% of the wealth actually was in their hands. Because what was happening was, you know, 70% had nothing, it just, just were, were going through life day to day to day to day. Some 20% had actually committed to something. They, they could verbalize their, their goals and could, if you ask them, they could tell you. But actually only a tiny percentage had actually taken the effort to write those plans down. And so the interesting thing is, well, why is that the case? You know, is it just by doing the plans, you know, writing it down that makes it happen? Or is there something a little bit more uh, deeper that's going on underneath the surface? And if I looked at this from businesses, I mean, we've got, 30 odd businesses on the call today and said to you, you know, how many of you have actually got a, a written plan, you know, for the next 90 days, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't too far off those numbers as well. You know, uh, so I'd expect probably up about 10% of you will actually have something written down, about 30% will have actually had something in their head and a lot of people won't have anything at all maybe slightly higher because you guys are a little bit more proactive than, than most business owners because you are uh, an actual webinar about planning. So the main reason we find is, you know, if you're not going anywhere, you don't need a plan. You know, it's as simple as that. I, and, I, and I bring this analogy in sporting world that, you know, if, if somebody came to me and said, Kevin, are you, you going to run a marathon, you know, next year? If I had any clue about running a marathon next year, I would not have a running plan. But if I say to, to somebody, I'm going to run a marathon in 12 months, you know, I'd be foolish to actually just start running. You know, right, I'm going to run a marathon next year. What should I do? Well, I'll just, I'll start running a marathon and I'll go off and I'll run. You know, it would be crazy. In, in any sport, it would be crazy to actually start that without actually having a clear yeah, you know, even if it's a verbal plan, a clear idea in my head of what I'm actually going to do. So what I find in, in when I talk to business owners and say, you know, do you have you know, some clear goals and a plan of where you actually, you know, what you're going to achieve? The ones that don't are generally the ones that don't have clarity of what they want to achieve, where they're going to be in a year's time, five years time, 10 years time. And, you know, and, and to me, that, that's worrying because, you know, without that, they're not going through the process, which we're going to come on to now, that's going to really help them understand what they need to do and how to get there. So the first thing within this is, you know, you've got to identify where you are yourself. You know, we're all a little bit reactive. You know, we've, we've built that way to, to deal with what's thrown at us. And if we, if we go back into the context of, you know, again, this, uh, this crisis is, you know, we're all plodding along quite nicely. You know, then the, the COVID uh, crisis hits, we all panic, we all run, a, run around, <clears throat> a lot of adrenaline going on, fixing things. Once they're fixed or we, we've sorted that out, we then need to go back to actually thinking, right, where do I want to be in a month's time? Where do I want to be in three months' time? Where do I want to be in 12 months' time? Now, there's never any guarantees with this, but if you've actually set the plan out, you've got a better chance of success. So in times of change, like, you know, say the COVID coming in, it, it, to me, it, it's times of change are good because what it can actually say to us is those habits, the conditions we were in three months ago, six months ago, were we 100% happy with that? So if you look back to your life, your business, yeah, and if you'd say, right, that was the end result, okay, that was like an exam, that was the, my, I did my exam, that was my, uh, my final part, am I 100% happy with that? 
was that a good use of my time for the number of years I've been in business to say, right, at that point, could I put a big tick and say, yeah, I was really, really pleased with exactly where I got to? Or would you look back and go, yeah, I could have done better. I'm not quite in the position that I should have been. Because this change, this, this sort of, you know, instant move into, uh, you know, what is probably going to be a, you know, some form of recession is time to reflect on that. And if it wasn't the case, then whatever we do now, we've got to come out of this and do something different. So if we got to that point and it wasn't quite where we want to do, now we've got a great chance to really shake ourselves up and go, right, let's make sure when I come out the next five years, yeah, I'm going to do things differently. I'm going to do things better. And the end result in five years time is going to be so much better than the previous five years coming up to this point. Because it, it's that sort of change in the way our brains work that is really going to help us move forward from this. And that really brings us on to you know, how does the brain work? And I've, I've studied this, this fascinated me for, for many years. I've done a lot of research into it. I'm not a PhD. Uh, you know, I don't have a PhD in it. I'm not a, a, uh, you know, a brain surgeon. You know, I just picked this up from other people's work and you know, using it to, to really try and get some idea of what's actually going on. <clears throat> and the way that the brain is developed, you imagine you know, we, we've been you know, millions of years in uh, evolution um, and our brains have evolved as much as our bodies have evolved. You know, if you take going back from you know, uh, reptilian through to mammalian through to human, you know, these physical functions that we have and how we look you know, has been replicated within our brains themselves. So our brains have gone through three phases of growth. The, the first phase, really, we share with all animals. Okay, this is our reptilian brain. So it's very small, it sits in the heart of our brain, and it basically is there to keep us alive. So it's our fight or flight, it's, it's food. It's in fact, if you go back to Maslow, for those who've done psychology, you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, this is about safety and security. Okay, it's about just maintaining the species, do whatever it takes to stay alive. There's a very basic but very fast acting part of our brain. It's the part of the brain that gives off all the adrenaline, you know, and the endorphins that actually says, yes, you've done the right thing, continue to do that. The second phase of our brain is called the limbic system. So it sits outside the reptilian and that we share with high level animals. It's our emotional brain, our limbic system. So this deals with our interaction with other people. It makes sense. If I do this, do I feel good? Okay, is this making me feel wanted you know, and accepted? It's part of our, our ego sits in there as well. Okay, so that ability to sort of, you know, feel, yeah, I've really, really done a good thing at the moment, you know, my wants and my desires. And then on the outside, the bit that we have more than any other animal on the planet is our neocortex. You know, this is our thinking brain. So this is our brain that allows us to project into the future and, and think about where we want to be and reflect on the past and learn from our past mistakes. It's an amazingly powerful part of our brain, but it's actually quite slow. It's not a great, so there's a lot of neural connections that fire here, but it's not quick. Reptilian brain is very, very quick. Limbic system is quick, but the neocortex is quite slow. But it's that ability to project into the future so that we can actually visualize things and we can start to see where we want to be and go go back into the past. So you take a sportsman, you, know, you see the rugby players and the golfers you know, visualizing the shot. Okay, They're actually visualizing the shape of the shot, where they want the ball to go. Yeah, Then they commit to the shot and then they allow the reptilian brain to actually then function and then do what it takes. For, for those that do play sport, if a neocortex tries to hit the ball, yeah, that's when it all goes wrong. So it's our ability to use that part of our brain in our thinking and then trust in our, our innate ability to actually then take what we've actually thought about and actually make it happen. And this is the real power of getting this brain to work as one. Okay, if we can get all those three systems, the neocortex, limbic and reptilian, working in unison, then we'll get success. If any of them are not in unison, so we're thinking the wrong thoughts, 
we're feeling the wrong feelings and we're doing the wrong things, then we're going to be in trouble. So what this is all about is bringing those three things together through a process, which is the planning process. And there's one little extra within the reptilian brain that we forget, which is the amygdala. So the amygdala is basically our early warning system that says, are we in danger? Okay. So when things happen, so like this crisis, you know, things are happening around us that switch this amygdala on that says, right, am I in danger? Yes or no. If I am in danger, then what do I do? And the amygdala says, right, if I'm in danger, I'm going to chuck all the blood you know, and energy I can into the reptilian brain because that's the part of the brain that's going to keep me alive. Okay, that will actually drive me forward. And it'll take the blood away from the neocortex and the limbic system and drive it into reptilian. So if you go back to when you first heard about you know, the crisis and the business was you're going to have to shut the business or reduce the business in size, you know, that initial adrenaline reaction yeah is basically driven by that amygdala that's saying right reptilian i need to do stuff i need to get stuff done so you become very busy you know it's actually you, you become quite productive to be honest to getting things done to actually move yourself forward once that adrenaline goes yeah then the amygdala goes am i in danger anymore no i'm not so it quietens down and then the limbic and neocortex have that chance to step in. And this is where you now start to get that feeling of, oh, how do I feel? Oh, I feel a bit uncomfortable. I feel a bit unsure. The neocortex starts thinking, well, what should I be thinking about? The future, the past. You know, and, and if we're not careful, this then gets all confused and we're not in alignment again. If this is confused, we go back into reptilian brain function. The amygdala kicks in to, if I'm confused, I'm in danger. So therefore it shuts this down and we go back into reptilian brain function and we start doing stuff. Okay, we become busy again. And that's the biggest challenge that we've got is the people that are busy are living on reptilian and amygdala, yet they're not allowing the neocortex and limbic system to kick in. So we've really got to look at what we need to do to actually move this forward. So taking this to the the next level and applying this back into goal setting yeah we've got to look at the three levels of goal setting are driven by those three levels of brain function our first level is our reptilian brain which is all about moving away from pain yet yeah, moving towards safety and security we don't have to think about that do we need a plan to move away from pain not really you know you know what the pain is you'll get off your backside and you'll do whatever it takes to move away from it and that's where we've been you know, pretty much for the last sort of, you know, at least two, four weeks, you know, if not a bit longer out of, you know, since the crisis had kicked in. So do you need a plan for that? No. You, know, you might want to do a, a little list of things that you, you need to get done today. But, but planning is not needed when you're in pain, reptilian brain function. Limbic system. So we need to now start where we are now, engaging this part of our brain. Okay, we need to to tap into our ability to look for pleasure, look for our wants and desires. Now, this is, to me, comes back to goal setting. You know, we should be sitting here right now saying, right, in a year's time, what do I want my business to look like? You know, I know what it was like six months ago, and I want it to be better than it was back in that day. Now, for some of you, your businesses have been majorly disrupted from, from this crisis, and that is going to be hard. It's going to be really hard to look at your business and go, it's going to be better in 12 months' time than it is now. But you've still got to do that. You've got to find some pleasure, find some brightness within this sort of chaos for something you can work towards. Now, some of you have pivoted. You know, I've got a couple of clients that we've pivoted away from the one business model into a new business model. And actually, you know, the pleasure of that, the, the upside of that is now massive. You know, we've, we're actually seeing opportunities in this new line that were far bigger than what they were in the old line. And that's given us that energy to drive towards where we want to go. <clears throat> and for those that have, you know, I, I see this is really where we are now. You know, we've come from pain, we're in pleasure. For some of you though, you're doing good. You know, you, you're in an okay place. The, the pleasure is there, the wants and desires, I've met most of those. For those people, it's now about purpose. It's about that higher level brain function of right well it's not about me anymore 
it's about what I can do for other people. And I know there's some of you out there and other businesses that have actually, you know, forgotten about their business model and said, look, I'm just going to make face masks. I'm just going to make respirators. I'm going to do something good for the population. Yeah, and that's great because you sit great self-fulfillment. Yeah, what we've got to make sure though that, that it has some longevity that we can keep that going yeah, into the future. So if you think about those three functions, you know, and look back in in your past and look at some major goals that you've achieved, you know, be it buying a house, you know, maybe starting the business in the first place or taking the business to a certain level. Some of you have sold businesses, you know, it might be a something in sport, something in personal life. I don't, I don't really mind what it is. Uh, ben, are you, are you there? Can I unmute you a sec? Can I use you as a yeah, so a, a bit of a test case? So is there a goal that you've achieved you know, in the last few years that you're, you're proud of? Uh, a personal goal or a work-related goal? Doesn't matter. Don't, don't, don't mind whatever, whatever you, uh, you know, something that's, uh, you know, you think, yeah, I, I'm really pleased with that goal. Yeah, so um, I'm a football referee at the weekends. Yeah. So one of my goals was to referee a cup final okay. in my first two seasons, which doesn't happen often. You've got to work hard. You've got to send, attend the promotion seminars and you've got to be on the promotion course and pass the laws of the game test and that sort of thing. So it's not something just anyone can do. There is a degree of, degree of hard work that goes into it as well. Cool. So was, was that goal a move away from pain goal? So were you in pain before you chose that goal? Um, no, I wouldn't say I was in pain from that. No, it was more of a, a, a personal achievement goal. Yeah. Yeah. So if we go, if I go back up, uh, yeah, go back up there, we're, we're looking here at a self-esteem status goal. You, you weren't doing it for financial reward, were you? No, no. So it's about, you know, I, I think I can achieve this. This is what I want to achieve. This will make me feel good if I actually achieve this goal. Exactly that, yeah. So this is, a, this is a pleasure, a move towards goal that you set. You didn't have to do it. You weren't moving away from, but uh, you know, you're moving towards. So once you've set that goal, you presumably made a commitment to yourself to achieve that goal, didn't you? Yes, so it was a lot of hard work, a lot of time, yeah. a lot of time spent the weekends, a lot of travelling. So, so when, you, when you made that commitment, did you, did you share that goal with anybody? Uh, so my referee appointers and development officers, they were aware of what I wanted to achieve yep. and close family and friends. Great. Okay. So you, you made a commitment to yourself and then you verbalized that to your family and friends and somebody outside of your family and friends. Yes. Yep. So that, that process of setting that goal and then making that commitment. Yeah. Once it's externalized. Yeah it's very difficult for you to go back on. Exactly, yeah. You kept that goal in your head. At any time, you could have given up on that goal and no one would have been any the wiser. Of course, yeah. And you could have easily let yourself off the hook, said, wow, you know, I was never going to do that anyway. I was never going to achieve that. Yeah. Now, at any point in your mind, did you think that you could fail at achieving that goal? Um, th there was times... It was more the, the long days of traveling, the long time being out of the house and some of the games when it did get a bit, a bit, a bit tough, a bit feisty, you're getting a, a load of abuse. Yep. Um, you, you almost think, is it worth it? Yeah. Yeah. See, the reason that most people don't set goals is because of the fear of failure. Yeah. If I set a goal to do this, then what if I fail? And that would have gone through your head at certain times in that yeah, did, yeah. process wouldn't it you would have you would have thought oh well you know well what if i do fail but you know that when you did fail that should have then basically driven back into pain yeah and said right i ain't gonna fail i've made this commitment i'm 100 percent I'm behind this i will pick myself up and i will do it again mm -hmm. yes. so, so you're, you're basically by setting this goal here when you go back into pain, it actually drives you back towards pleasure. So we're now utilizing both parts of the brain here to actually achieve that. Now, the additional one for you is by actually being a great referee, are you helping other people as well? I believe so. I think I'm making a difference. Yeah. 
yeah, because you know, if you even if you work, if you you know, refereeing for, for kids football, you know, you're helping those kids to actually do things. So and now we're also linking what you're doing into a purpose. So there's a, there's a purpose here, self fulfilment, something beyond yourself. There's the pleasure of the ego, the self esteem and status, and when it's tough, yeah, it drives you forward. If it had been easy to do, yeah, I reckon you would have got bored halfway through. Yeah, as soon as you've got it, you go and find us. Great, yeah. Yeah. People don't run marathons because they're easy. <laughs> no, definitely People not. Run marathons because they are tough because they're going to go through pain, pleasure, and purpose in that process. That's why they do it. You know, just running for the sake of it is okay, but you add a purpose, a charitable. You know, I'm going to raise a thousand pounds for charity. You know, suddenly it kicks in. You know, look at um, the um, <clears throat> Captain Captain Tom. You know, there was a bit of pain going on in in his his walk. You know, he had to push himself. You know, on his on his little Zimmer frame. Yeah, there wasn't much. You know, he wasn't really doing it for the esteem and status because he didn't need to. But it was heavily on purpose. He was a purpose driven individual which drives you through. So we're tapping into those three parts of our brain to actually drive us forward. So if we bring this back into the business, you know, the business has to be driven by these two. You know, the, the, the pleasure, you know, what do you want? And the bigger purpose, if it's not just about you, it's about, right, create a business that can help as many people as you can. Yeah, if you if you do that, then you can have a business that will keep on going, keep on going. If your business, if you look back in your business over the last five years and it's plateaued, yeah, and it's sort of hit a certain level and it hasn't gone any further, I guarantee you it's because either, you know, your esteem and status has run out, so you've got to where you want to be, yeah, and you haven't got a self-fulfillment goal to tack on the end. Yeah, that you're not thinking about the bigger picture about, yeah, how many more people can you employ to, to give them jobs? How many customers can you help to actually help them solve their problems? How many suppliers can you actually buy equipment from? So there's some chat coming through here. So uh, um, oh, blimey, that's, a, that's, a, that's a long one to read. I'll, I'll, let me let me come back to that one. Uh, so so yeah so. So the balance between all of these is, you know, I, I'm not here to say which one should be the most. I, I know people that have driven massive business purely based on their own self-esteem and status. It's got nothing to do with purpose at all. Yeah, it's purely this. Yeah, I know other people that it's purely purpose. It's, it's about, you know, I don't really need to make a lot of money. You know, I just want to help the community. Now, whatever it is, I don't care. It's down to you. If it drives you forward, if it makes you feel good, if it moves things towards where you want to go, that's great. All I'm saying is, you know, don't get to a level where you just end up ticking over. You know, you're in your comfort zone. This year is going to be the same as last year plus 2%. That's not a goal, okay? A goal is like Ben said, a goal is achieving something that you could bloody well fail at you know, and is going to take a lot of effort to actually get you there. Those are the goals that are worth pursuing. So when we, when we look at the goals and we sort of break these down then, then you've all heard of SMART goals, I'm, I'm assuming. Uh, you know, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic in a time frame. You know, th these were set, I don't know who set the SMART acronym, you know, all those years ago, but I guess this was a very left brain, logical, analytical type of person okay because most most dreams most goals are what i call fluffy goals you know they're airy fairy you know i want to be you know i want to be thinner i want to be fitter okay they're, they're they're dreams what this person did was say right well if you want to turn a, a, a dream into reality you've got to make it specific so how much fitter do you want to be measurable can you measure your level of fitness now and you're your fitness in the future, achievable, you know, can you actually achieve it? Is it realistic within the time frame? Okay, so, so this was a, a process to take a, a, an emotional fluffy goal and turn it into a logical goal. The problem I find with a lot of 
business people is they end up setting smart goals, yeah, but they lack what I call the inspiration and emotion. So they they actually become quite boring. They become a to do list. You know, I need to do this. I need to do this. You know, it's specific measure. Yeah, it's all of that. But there's no emotional connection to it. So it becomes very neocortex driven, yeah, which is our very powerful but very slow. We lack that limbic system. That limbic system and that reptilian brain is what gets us to take action. So I had I came up with this sort of you know increasing the acronym to Smarty Goals. You know, add the I and E because if those that are old enough remember the advert, Smarties have the answer. Okay, it's that ability to actually say, right, this is specific, measurable, but you know, it, it actually hits me here. Now, for those that have done some reading, uh, Jim Collins' book, Good to Great, talks about BHAGs, big, hairy, audacious goals. So we should be sitting right now in our businesses setting BHAGs, big, hairy, audacious goals. Right, in 12 months' time, in five years' time, my business is going to be here. You know, I don't know how I'm going to do it, you know, and I might fail. I might not get there. Okay, but whatever's going to be thrown at me, I've got this direction, I've got this in, emotional connection and a, a clear purpose to where I actually I want to be. And, you know, it really comes down to this, you know, a, a dream, you know, that isn't written down, you know, just, just stays a dream. But if you write it down, it becomes a goal. If you break that goal down, you can actually create the plan. If you plan, back the plan with some action, you make it reality. Okay, this is where we need to be now with our businesses. It's almost like saying today's the first day of your business. This is a business startup. Now, if I gave you the keys, you, you didn't know about your business right now, and I gave you the keys to this business right now, you paid me a pound for it, what would you do with that business? Where would you take it? Forget what's happened in the past. You know, even if your business is half the size now of where it was 12 months ago, you're going to have to get over that. Okay? I, I was with a company you know, many years ago. We took it to 4 million turnover. You said about my four recessions. 4 million turnover, 50 staff, brand new factory, flying. We, we, we were the, the dog's bollocks. You know, we were just, it was so cool to be in part of that business. Supply, the customer phones up one day, says we're going through supply rationalization and you're one of the businesses we've rationalized. Yeah, you've got three months, we won't be buying from you in three months. 90% of our business went like that overnight. We went from 4 million to 250,000 pound turnover in three months, from 50 people to one person in three months, from a factory with all the kit to no factory working out the back, of, the back unit. Okay, you have to get over that stuff. Okay, things happen, shit happens. Okay, you, you are gonna, the longer you're in business, the more you're gonna fail. Okay, you've got to get over the fact that. Failure is just a way to rebuild yourself bigger and better going forward. We turn that business, we never got back to 4 million, we turn it back to a 2 million pound business, or we were making twice the amount of profit within two years. Okay, if you've got that right mindset, then you can achieve this stuff. And that's really where you've got to be now. Reset the dreams, reset the goals, and then once you've set the goals, then the plan becomes you know, needed. You, know, you then have to have a plan. And the other thing that then stops people once they've got the goals from plans is their, their vision of the plan you know, is wrong. They, they don't know what a good business plan should look like. And in all my years, you know, I was a chartered accountant. I've, I've created more bloody plans than uh, you know, most people have had, uh, I'll say that dinners, but uh, but most people think of business plans as these business plans, okay? And I've done loads of these, helped clients with these in the last few weeks. You know, the Sybils uh, plans, the good thing is the bounce back plan, we didn't need a plan. Um, but, you know, the bank type business plan. Now, there's only one reason for a bank type business plan, and that is to get your loan. Okay, what goes in it? For a lot of you, if you have done them, you know, you're sitting there going, well, I don't know if that's going to happen or not. It doesn't matter. Okay? It's there to get you finance. So you're, you're showing the bank what they need to know, you know to, give, to, to ensure there's security and there's the ability to repay your debt. That's all they're interested in. They don't care what you do, really. 
you know, have you got the security? Are you able to pay to, to repay the, the funding? So most people think about that as being a spreadsheet with all the numbers and blurb of you know, what the business does, etc. Great. Okay. If you need to do that to get funding, then you need to do that. But that is not, in my book, a business plan. Okay. You cannot take that plan and then action it. Go back. If I go back to here, yeah, a plan backed by action. Your plan needs to be an actionable plan. Bank budgets, bank business plans are not actionable documents. Once you've done it, you've got the money, I bet that document goes in the bottom drawer and you don't see it again. And you'll be very unlikely that the bank ever asks to see it as well, unless you're asking for, for lots and lots of money and then they do hold you accountable to it. The next type of business plan really takes that a little to another step. And this is where you're looking for funding from investors. Okay, so funding from investors. You know, if I'm looking to invest in your business, I want to see a far more detailed plan than the, uh, the bank plan. I want to see competitive analysis. I want to see, you know, um, the ability for people to, to come into the market, disruptions, your SWOT analysis. Okay, because I need to understand your business you know, from outside, from not knowing anything about your business in as quick a possible time so I can, I can get as much information to know whether I should invest. Okay, now this type of business plan is great for startups, you know, and at some point you should do this, okay, because it really makes you reflect on your business. You know, I said to you before, if now today was the first day of your business and you were buying this business from me for a pound, yeah, would you invest that pound in it? You know, is your business going to be, you know, five times, ten times the size it is now in five years time? Because I guarantee these guys are not going to invest in you unless you can show that it's going to be that way. So maybe there's a little bit of this you, need, you do need to do. You need to reflect on where's my business going to be? Would, would I invest in it? Would somebody else invest in it? So you do the Porter's Five Forces, the SWOT analysis. You know, there's, there's lots of stuff you can see. You know, if you want a copy of this type of business plan, I can send you a you know, 51 page. I've got you know, a client going through this process now because it's there to get investors involved in it. Okay, but sometimes you've got to decide whether you're going to be the investor in your own business. You know, is it a good enough business for you to spend the next five years working at? Or actually, should you actually ditch this business and go and start another business? And for some of you, yeah, that is a decision you're going to have to make. You know? You know, is, this the, is this the horse I want to back for the next five years? The business plan that I think everyone should have, you know, is a type of business plan that, that I do with clients, you know, and it's as simple as, you know, a piece of paper or a whiteboard and some post-it notes. Okay. It can be, you know, I've, I've done business plans recently, just quick ones with a, you know, on a, on a, uh, a white screen, which Zoom is great for. We do four quadrants, yeah, and we look at those four key quadrants. And every business is basically four things: it's finance and admin, sales and marketing, operations and people. Okay, that's that's all businesses are really when you boil them down. It's those four key things: how am I going to get new business? Yeah, how do I keep the financials, the financials? How do I get the operations working? And how do I build my team? We break that down, as I'll show you in a minute, into a little bit more, sort of a bit more scientific and a, a bit more detailed, but in essence, that's it. And basically, we need to brain dump, right? So what are the key things I need to do in each of those areas in order to reach that goal that I've set myself? Okay, and we just use a piece of paper like this, we write it down, stick it on the board, and we go through the process. Because the key to planning is it's much the process of doing this than the actual end result. The beauty with this approach that we use is, you know, this is a, a, you know, this sort of big piece of paper can actually stick on the wall and it will remind you on a daily basis, what have you done? Yeah, every time you do something, you take a post-it off it, yeah, and you have the, the satisfaction of scrunching up and chucking it in the bin. When you get a new idea, you go, great, new idea, right on a post-it, stick it on the board. Okay, this is not about business plans that go in the bottom drawer and never get seen again. So we've got to be thinking, you know, what are the areas am I actually going to focus on? What are the strategies that I'm actually going to use? And then if you go through this, you know, again, if, if I go back, it, 
this is a design as you can see down the left hand side here we've got to break the business down into its component parts now it's a bit like that how do you eat an elephant one piece at a time so this is from Action Coach. This is why I joined Action Coach because when I saw this for the first time, it was like a, you know, uh, a head slap moment. You know, here is a business broken down it, into its component parts, and if we get these pieces together, we can build any business. I don't care what business it is; these component parts all make it up. Okay. If anybody wants a copy of this, please email me afterwards. Uh, or you know, if you've got Ben's details, then email me. My, my email address is Kevin Stansfield at actioncoach.com. Okay, so it's just my name, actioncoach.com. Email me and I'll send you copies of whatever you want. The only thing I can't send is the slides, but you know, if you want these documents, I'll, I'll quite happily send you this. So I haven't got time to go through. We do this in, in, a, in other webinars um, that, that we've got. I've got uh, a video that will go through an hour that will take you through each of these steps and explain what it is. But each of these have been identified because they, you know, the mastery is the bedrock of the foundations. Niche is how we get the growth through our five-way system. Leverage is systemizing the business and then building the team. Because at the end of the day, a business is just a group, a bunch of systems and a bunch of people. Okay, and, and the more people and the more systems you've got, the bigger a business you can actually build. You know, a business is not about you working harder. Okay? A business is about you working smarter. Yes, in the early days, you have to put the effort in. But again, that vision of what the business is going to be in five years' time should not be, I'm going to be doing everything. Because you've got a job. You know, if you do that, you've just got a job. And if, if it's a job you love doing and you're okay, then that's great. But for me, a business really should give you three things. You know, the first one is to do something you enjoy doing. So don't, don't, start a business of something you don't enjoy doing because you know you will you will fail it's a bit like you Ben with your your refereeing you didn't do that because you hated football you know you love football you, you love refereeing and therefore you were willing to put that effort in to actually do it okay the second thing is you've got to make enough money and have enough time in the here and now to actually enjoy your life because you know we don't know what's going to happen in five years' time, ten years' time. You know, there's people, you know, before the coronavirus thinking they've got loads of time before, and actually that time has been cut short. You know, life is precious. So we've got to enjoy the time we have now, doing the work we do, but also outside the work, the holidays that we have, you know, the family, the time with the family, the money to buy nice things. Okay, it's got to be right for you for those goals. And the one that most people forget is <clears throat> the longer term picture is having a business should allow you to be financially free quicker and easier than if you were working for somebody else. Okay, because if you work for somebody else, the only way you can be financially free really is to earn enough money to build enough pension so by the time you're 65 or you know, for, for most of us, you know, 70, 75, that we've got enough invested that we can then be financially free. When you own a business, you own an asset. And the idea is to grow that asset so that asset can either be your pension pot or you can sell it to be your pension pot. Okay, so it's really key to have that sort of focus on what we need to do to actually grow this business. And this is, this is the six steps to actually achieve that. And then once we've got all of that, the key is we've got to learn how to schedule our priorities. Okay, it's no good just having a to-do list and then working through that. We've got to plan this out into our day-by-day, week-by-week diary. Okay, and this is a little tip. This is a format I've used for many years. It's just, again, nice and simple. It's just in an Excel spreadsheet. There are far fancier programs now that can do all of this. I just like to keep things simple. Okay, so again, I'm not going to go through the detail of this. You know, if you want a copy of it, I do other workshops that explain this in more detail. But it's really be clear, you know, what is the goal we're trying to achieve? How are we going to measure our route to that goal? What are the strategies that we've picked up from that previous stage? You know, what's the activity? Who's going to do it? When does it get done? By? Who does what by when? Now, again, the purpose of this is not necessary to have this document. Okay, the purpose of this is to, to go through that process in your mind to engage each part of those brains, the neocortex is doing the thinking and the planning, 
Yeah, it's setting the goals and the sort of, yeah, I want to achieve that, which ignites the limbic system, that sort of want to move towards pleasure. And it engages the reptilian brain into the actions that says, right, now just go and do this. But what happens with most people when they don't plan it in this way and time scale it is they start off really fast and really they go for it and then they burn out. Okay, after you know, a week, two weeks, three weeks, they do loads of stuff, you know, and then they go, oh, they have a crash because that reptilian brain runs on adrenaline. Adrenaline cannot, you cannot live on adrenaline long term without doing your body harm. So the adrenaline goes, as soon as the adrenaline goes, then inaction happens. So we have a peak of activity, it drops off a cliff, and then we have a prolonged period of inactivity. We forget about the plan. We start making excuses, blaming other people, blaming customers, blaming the team, blaming the weather, blaming the government. Yeah, and then we go back to doing what we've always done and we go nowhere. So by doing this, we're actually setting ourselves a pace. You know, if I, again, go back to if I was to run a marathon, I wouldn't start running a marathon from day one. I would say, right, my first goal is to run to the end of the road. Yeah, next week I'll run a bit further. Next week I'll run a bit further. So we want to get that pace in. So we go through that process of thinking, how am I actually going to achieve this? And the one thing that writing it down does then allow us to do is actually check in with ourselves on a regular basis. You know, have we actually achieved what we said we were going to achieve? So are we actually where we want to be? And the beauty with this, go back to, to Ben, where he was saying, you know, I committed to other people. Once you have a plan like this, you can commit this plan to other people, you know, the team, the team members. You know, would you write a plan like this and show every one of your team members? For a lot of you, the answer is no. Because as soon as you do that, they're going to expect you to achieve it. Okay, And if you're letting them down, you're actually letting yourself down as well. And this is where a coach comes in because you know, a coach will actually have this plan, be checking up with you. Have you done what you said you're going to do? celebrating you when you do, picking you up when you don't, and helping you over the challenges that block you in, in your path. Okay, so it's very much about getting things done in that way. But we've basically taken that elephant, you know, that big dream that you had, setting it some clear goals, putting the plan together, then prioritizing it and putting it into place. And the final stage of that is then put it into your diary. Okay, so your 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 calendar, if you use Google Calendar or anything similar, you know, there should be time in that calendar to work on your business, yeah, which is this stuff. The reactive stuff, working in it, you know, you'll still have to do. You know, it depends what size business you are and how big the team is, but most of you are going to still be reactive to some extent. But the more you work on it, the more you work on the plan, yeah, and know that, right, this Friday afternoon, I've got to work on my business, right, on here, this says I should be doing this right. Let's do that. Because if you get to Friday afternoon and you don't have this, I guarantee it'll be filled with stuff. And that'll be another week wasted and you, know, you won't be moving forward. So really that, that sort of brings me pretty much to the end you know, of the importance. You know? And again, I can't iterate enough. Most people say, oh, you know, in a crisis, in, in, in this situation, you know, I, I'm too busy to plan. I don't have enough time to plan. You know, that's just crazy thinking. Okay, having this plan will save you so much time in the long run. Yes, it will cost you time now, but it will save you so much time in the long run that you'd be a fool not to do that. And the other thing is, you know, your plan must have flexibility built into it, especially now. Okay, I, I reckon I'm, I'm writing plans with clients now that may well be completely changed in a month's time. Okay, when we came into this, we wrote plans on, on potential redundancies for half of our staff. Okay, they brought the furlough rules in. Great, well, that plan's gone. I now need to write another plan. Okay, so that, that speed of things changing, you know, really. Uh, oops, sorry, somebody's come into the uh, room. Uh, a bit late, really. Um, so, that sort of ability to, to write the plan, be flexible and write it again if you need to. Okay, don't forget it's the process of writing the plan that is more important 
than actually the plan itself. And that's why the format doesn't really matter. I don't care what it looks like. You know, as long as it works for you, as long as it's visible, and as long as we've got something written down that we can come back to, then that's the key thing. So, so Ben, that's, uh, I think that's, uh, let me just check, I've got, uh, oh, I, uh, oh, sorry, I, I forgot that I added, added a bit more. So, so the real benefits of, of the plan are it gives you clarity. Okay, it gives you real clarity around what you're trying to achieve and how you're going to do that. It allows you to focus on a day by day, week by week basis. This is what I said I was going to do. This is what I should focus on. And the final part is it gives you the accountability to actually hold yourself accountable. And that's without doubt, if you look at successful people, they are brilliant at holding themselves accountable. Ben, can I just take you off mute again? Yeah, all here. Yeah. So go back to your, your refereeing. You know, did you have somebody holding you accountable to achieving, you know, your qualification? I had my de referee development officer sort of keeping on my case, but it was it was more down to myself. I I, I was accountable for what I had to do. <laughs> yeah. The the only person that's going to benefit out of doing that is you. Yeah. Okay. So 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 my job as a coach is you know is not to be your mother. You know I'm not here to wipe your ass and blow your nose for you but it's it's there to have somebody that you're actually helps you with your self accountability self accountability for anybody that's had a personal trainer you know you know that you know, you'll turn up to that training because you've committed to that person you don't like letting other you'll let yourself down but you won't let somebody else down so really that's where it comes in so all of my clients are highly self accountable yeah but actually meeting with me on a weekly basis actually takes that self-accountability to the next level. And that's what the plan does. It just allows that self-accountability to be pushed to, to another level. And, you know, the biggest challenge after all that's said and done more often said than ever done. You know, we have a, a bit of a unique situation, I think, for a lot of you in business right now is you have a bit of quiet time. You have a bit of thinking time. You have a bit of planning time. You know, use it. You know, I, somebody said to me, you know, we'll look back on this period of you know, two months and, and people will say, you know, well, what did you do with your two months? You know, how, how, what, how did you invest your time, this precious time that, you know, is so rare? How did you use that to the best? Now, some people are doing qualifications. Some people are online courses. Some people are just sitting watching Netflix for two months. You know, my commitment was, you know, my, my job was to actually help as many people as I can in the next two months. That, that's what I set out to do. So if I can get to the end of this and have achieved that, then job done. That's why, you know, I'm happy to do these sorts of talks because that was, that was my decision. You know, it was about helping other people through this. Yeah, I know that I can get back to my goals and what I want to achieve once we're through this. That's, I know the problem with that. But it's about helping you get that action. Yeah, and it is you know, the key. Action is a foundational key to all, all success. You know, if you don't take action as a result of that plan, if you don't commit and do something, then nothing's going to change. Okay. Now you might get it wrong. You might go down the wrong alley. You might take the wrong decision. It really doesn't matter. Okay. By making those decisions, by making that commitment to do it, that's what's needed because it's about. I think the key now coming, it's certainly coming out of this into June, is about momentum. You've got to create momentum as quick as you can for yourself and for your team. Okay, you've really got to push that forward um, to, to get that momentum to get you through this. And will there be more challenges in the way? 100%. Okay, this is, this is we've got another, at least another nine months. Don't forget, at the end of this year, we've got Brexit, guys. You know, so this is, you know, this is, this is just the start of, you know, another year. So we can't have the whinging and moaning that, oh, it's tough. Yes, it is tough. Running a marathon is tough. Anything of value in your life is tough. Okay. But having clear goals, having a plan, having support to achieve that, that's what will get you through. So that is, the, that is really the most important. So I think, uh, I've pretty much done that in an hour. Blimey, that's the uh, uh, first, first time I've run through that. So are there any questions? If, if you do want to talk, 
you just press your space bar uh, and you can ask a question. Uh, if not, then uh, please you know, write on uh, the, uh, uh, the chat box here. So uh, I think we've got there. So, um, yeah, so yeah, an hour of my time. Um, for those that have seen me on uh, the WhatsApp group, so I'm running a WhatsApp group to help business owners to give them advice and support. I, I dedicated an hour every day of the week. Uh, to to give support so if anybody would like that please email me okay don't put it don't I, the chat box goes once the uh, uh the webinar finishes but please email kevin stansford actioncoach.com uh i will happily invest an hour of my time with you um and uh, i'm doing them sort of nine till ten in the morning and five till six at night so i'll let you know which which one of those are available um, there's loads of stuff. There's, my YouTube channel has got loads of videos that uh, you can access to as well. Um, you know, I really am here to help you know, as many people as I can through this. I know it's tough. You know, as I said my father's business failed after 15 years um, you know, because he couldn't adapt and change through the 92 recession. You know, that impacted our family massively. He never worked again after that. Um, I don't want anyone to get feel that they have to go through this on their own. It's, it's so important to, to seek out and so so thankful for the chamber, you know, the work they're doing as well. You know, they are a great support line to to actually help. So uh, uh, and yeah, you know, if you if you haven't got your C bills loan or your bounce back loan, you know, talk to somebody about it. Okay. I think it's it's you know the furlough and the and the bounce back loan are the best lifelines that you can ever have. You can whinge your money about anything else, but those two things are going to save more businesses. But there is no point in getting that bounce back loan if you don't have a plan of what to do with it. Okay, because the worry and stress of that money having to be repaid in twelve months is probably going to kill you, yeah, you know, more than actually anything that the coronavirus is going to do because you suddenly have a debt you know, that you've got to repay and you've got to have a clarity. And, and please don't just take it and fill the gap. You know, do not take that money and not have a plan. You know, it's, it, it's highly, that's the only downside to it is they've given so much money away. At least when you apply for bank loan, there's a, there's a check and balance process to make sure, are you really clear what you want? You know, with the bounce back, you just stick a few boxes and the money's in your account. And while that's fantastic, it's also, there's going to be a lot of businesses that are just not prepared for it. And in 12 months time, they've just kicked the can down the road, 12 months time, they are going to be in serious problems. So don't be one of those, be one that takes the money and says, right, there's my plan. That's where I'm going to go and then commit to actually doing it. So. Cool. Any, any, any final questions? Um, so uh, how long will the government loans be around for? <laughs> well, how, how long is the government going to be around for? You know, uh, the way it's giving out money. Uh, to be honest, it's there. Take it. You know, I took mine the day it came out. Okay. You know, yes, at the moment it's sitting in a deposit account earning no interest. Uh, in the short term, you know, and please don't quote me on this, uh, but uh, I'm probably going to take a little bit out and stick it in premium bonds uh, for a couple of months, okay. And you know, if I, if I if Ernie says I win a million pounds, then fantastic. But you know, I'd rather have the money there and then decide what I want to do with it than not have the money and then in three months time go actually I need it and find they've actually you know, scrapped the scheme. You know, it could go as quickly as it came. So you know, if you've got a chance, take it. Then write the plan. Don't write. Don't necessarily wait for the plan and then then do it. So, so, but a good, good question. Uh, and the other thing with the furlough, you know, that is, we've been extended till July. Okay, then it's going to start reducing. You've got to get your furlough, your back to work plan in now if you haven't done it already. Okay, it's no good waiting till the end result because then you're back to reactive, you're back to reptilian brain function, and you, there's a good chance you'll get it, you'll get it wrong. So, cool. Anything else, Ben? So. No, I think I've just turned my camera on. I don't know if everyone can see me, but uh, you're back. You're just, back in the room. 
Perfect. So um, I just want to say thank you to you for sharing your, your presentation and your information with everyone. Um, I will send an email out shortly, just seeing you in so everyone has your email address so if they want to contact you further. Yeah, that'd be great. And, um, yeah. They can contact you directly if that works. Um, yep. You said you could, could share the slides or you sh just some slides? I, or whole presentation? I, don't, I don't tend to share slides, mainly no, because fair enough. you've seen from my slides, there's not much on it. If there is a particular slide that somebody wants, then I will happily sort of send that one, certainly one of the, the early ones on goal setting. Uh, and the, but the 90 day plan, I, if somebody wants the 90 day plan or the, uh, uh, the wall chart, I can send you that. Um, Perfect. We do that. Yeah. So if anyone, if anyone wants a slide, then just email you directly, I suppose. Yeah, please just just email me. Uh, website, um, you know, you can find find me on LinkedIn. Please, you know, anyone on here, link in to me. Uh, I, I try and get LinkedIn is my main communication channel. Uh, so I, I post a lot of hopefully good stuff on there for people to access. And um, you know, it's uh, yeah, just I'm just here to help in any way I can. So. Perfect. So, well, thank you very much, Kevin. That, that's a little over an hour, only just. So, I, I don't think we can we can moan too much at that. Kevin, I suppose we should end the meeting there. I suppose. Does that work for you? Yes. Yes. All happy if, if there's okay. no further. Yeah. No, no further questions. And what I what I do, I've, I've recorded this. So, uh, if any of you want other people think they should see it, um, I'll be posting this up on LinkedIn uh, probably over the weekend. And uh, please grab a copy from when it's up there. So the more people that can be aware of this, for me, the better. So. Perfect. Thank you very much, Kevin. If you just want to hang on the line, Kevin, we'll just have a quick chat afterwards. And I welcome everyone else to uh, carry on your Fridays. Have a super and weekend, everybody. Enjoy, enjoy the bank holiday. And uh, yeah, good luck with your plans and, uh, and your bouncing back. So uh, nice to see you all. Cheers, guys. See ya. Kevin, someone's wrote in the um the chat your book. Oh, Tracy, sorry, I was wrote in your in your chat. Your book is very good too. Yes, I didn't know you wrote a, wrote a book. Yeah, I'd I say there's there's just sometimes too much. I should have put that at the start, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's uh, called the Big Dipper: uh, How to Survive the uh, Mental Roller Coaster of Business Ownership, and it's um, it's very very relevant to today. So. Uh, because obviously everyone's going through you know, a big dip at the moment. Yeah, of course. We've got to come out the other side. Um, so, uh, yeah, so if you like reading, then, uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll send, you the, uh, send you the link. And, yeah, uh, perfect. Not Amazon, but uh, we've, got, we've got a stash of copies here that I can send to you. Oh, thank you very much. I think, that went, uh, I think that went really well. We still have Sarah and, and Mervyn in the room, but uh, I'm not sure if they're still there. And oh, there's gone. nothing we're going to talk about here. Go, go, go and enjoy, enjoy the sunshine outside. Kevin, can I just ask, how much, how much do you charge for one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching? I, maybe not, I've got uh, programs to suit all, all, all shapes and sizes. So, you know, as I said to, to Ben, from, from £10 for a copy of my book up, up yeah. to hundreds of thousands. So, best thing, Merv, you know, uh, send me an email. And we'll, we'll book a chat and then I'll, I'll talk you through what I've got. It's, it's really about getting it right for you. Yeah. And you know, all of my programs, I guarantee return on investment. So right. I'll put you on a program that wasn't going to make you money in the next 12 months. Uh, but I need to know who, what you're doing okay. and what you're trying to achieve to, to know what's best for you. So, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not cheap, Merv. I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. Yes. Uh, but, yeah, because I guarantee. <laughs> as, I, as I say to people, you know, if, if, I was selling you, if I was selling you parachutes, do you want the cheap one or the expensive one? <laughs> All right, I'm just going to send you an email now. Then. Well, excellent. Thank you. Thanks for coming on, yeah, Merch. Take care. Bye. Sarah, did did you do you did you have a question to ask, or you have you just gone off to make a cup of tea? Just before you're about to ask me a question, I was just thinking I need to uh, refill my drink, and then I was just sitting there. I'll get that in a second. And unfortunately, I didn't go at the uh, the wrong time. <laughs> that would have been awfully embarrassing if you'd uh, called me in. I was, where, where's, where was, where's the host gone? He's he's got yeah. bored within five minutes of the call. To... Just making a cup of tea and sat, sat watching Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that went really well. I, I the presentation went smoothly. 
great um, lib of engagement so i think that's all we yeah. can ask for yeah, you know? it's, it's always you know it's difficult because you know engagement on the scene i'd say thanks for you know able to pick on you because it's always good to you know even, even if it's non-business related it still makes it more real and more relevant well that's why i asked if it was personal business because i thought if you had just gone business then that i suppose you do that every day but if you go for personal i thought well what have i achieved recently or what was i working towards and but well, it's not probably not often you speak to someone who is going to throw a football refereeing challenge at you so uh i'd say the, the more the more diverse the better because it's what i want to prove is the concept yes and exactly that no matter what the con where it's business or football or whatever it is once you un under understand how our brains work and how they all piece things together then you can apply it to whatever situation so i think it was whatever, a whatever goal you set now in your, in your personal life you now know right i need a dream i need a goal i need a plan i need a act. yeah if you no, do i think it went really well then, then you're not going to go far wrong there's no guarantee yeah, that it, you'll get success but you'll have the best chance of success there is. Yeah. No, I really enjoyed it. So thank you very oh, much. Thank you. Well, look, please, if, uh, yeah, I'd love to do another one. So, uh, you know, I, I always say, yeah, have, uh, I normally say, sort of have PowerPoint will travel, but I don't even have to travel now. So no, you don't. <laughs> uh, if there's a topic you want, you know, you think time management or uh, that's a pretty hot topic at the moment or yeah. sales marketing, then please just let me know. This sort of time of uh, the week works well for me. Well, do you want to send over yeah, a, a few ideas of what you could present on and we'll, we'll go from there? Yeah. yeah. It's, I suppose that's better, better than you know what you can present on. I'm just going to throw some ideas at you and you're like, oh, well. well I, I can put that on as Ben. The, the, the more challenging question you can ask me, <laughs> uh, the better. So uh, if Perfect. you've got some ideas, just say, look, could you do something on this? Then I'll, 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 I'll either say yes or no. So. Um, All right, yeah. So cool. I'm well, I'm away next I, week. I, I get a bit blind with what what people want to hear so uh, yeah of course of course say, well actually i've got a lot of people asking about this like time management then great mm -hmm. I, I can put something together oh great well i'm off next week so let's revisit this the week after next and we'll go from there so yeah. when we have some form of new update from the government yeah that'd be brilliant lovely cheers ben Perfect. Cheers, bye -bye. Ta -da.